Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are happy to support you on your journey towards certification success. For those of you that have recently been successful, congratulations. We're excited to hear about all of the great successes of our nurse educators that have completed their journey. If you're still on your journey, remember we are here to support you every single step of the way until you are successful. In this episode, we wanted to talk a little bit about a very hot topic these days, which is next gen, and how are we going to best prepare our pre-licensure nursing students to be successful on the NCLEX exam. There are six key steps that we wanted to highlight and align with the NLN certification exam. Remember that competency three is where you're gonna find those sub-competencies related to evaluation of our teaching strategies. It is our responsibility as nurse educators to ensure that students have actually learned and that they are developing their critical thinking skills. Let's take a look at six key steps associated with the NCLEX questions. We encourage you to spend some time reviewing the content that has been released and very well published in the literature about how to get students ready for next gen. And most importantly, for purposes of this topic, we wanna ensure that our strategies are aligning with competency three, which is evaluation strategies. This is our goal, right? For every student, we want them to receive a grade of A. That is going to validate for them that they have learned and reassure us that there is alignment on our exams with the course objectives, the student learning outcomes, and mapping back to the content in the course. We want to spend time with our students better understanding where their gaps are, talking through content with them to ensure that they fully understand the concepts that they are being taught in the classroom. There are several key teaching strategies that we can engage our students in to help them better understand the concepts. First, having a discussion with students about any content areas that are unclear during our in-classroom time or via a discussion board that is part of a virtual classroom. Second, we can develop learning guides for our students to outline some of those key concepts that they can expect to see questions on when they sit for the exam. Third is scheduling an exam review. This is go going to allow students time to come to a session with us and talk about the questions that they missed we in turn can also talk about trends or common themes as it relates to gap areas that several students may have demonstrated when they did not do well on the exam. And the final recommendation is to ensure that the mapping has occurred appropriately and there is alignment with each question on the exam to include mapping it back to the course objective mapping it to the appropriate levels of Bloom's taxonomy, and mapping the content back to the actual course content, whether it was textbooks or additional reading assignments or even additional group work that may have been done amongst students. We just want to make sure there is clear alignment when we take a look at that exam blueprint. Next, we're going to take a look at some very common themes that we have seen in the literature. Again, we want you to do your homework and make sure you're looking at the evidence for yourself to ensure that you are best prepared when it comes to how to write NCLEX style questions to best prepare students for next gen. First, this was a common theme that we saw, completion questions should no longer be part of our exam questions. We want all of our exam questions to be in the form of an actual question. Second, we want them to be gender neutral and free of any names or ages. So unless the gender or the age is relevant, we should not include that content in our question. Remember that exams it are just one form of evaluation. There are many different forms, but for purposes of this episode, we're just honing in on some best practices to get you ready and to get you in the mindset of how you as the educator are going to equip yourself with the knowledge you need to write solid exam questions. Third, the STEM should be short and to the point. 
we don't want long drawn out scenarios. Remember that we should ensure that our exam questions are succinct and that we are focused on specific content. Fourth, the STEM should not teach. So it should be a statement. And here's an example. If we are asking for an action, we might wanna use the words, what should the nurse do first? Or what is the priority nursing action? This is gonna ensure that it is clear to the student exactly what we're asking them for. Okay, so we should avoid questions such as, what should you do? We wanna avoid those kind of statements. Fifth, ensure that each option makes sense, right? That it is a plausible or realistic option and the each option should be about the same length whenever possible. And the final tip that we wanted to share is to avoid humor or slang terms. We know that we can sometimes want to write relatable questions on our exams to help students better connect, but that is not a best practice, okay? So we wanna stay away from humor and slang terms. We hope this information has been helpful. We encourage you to take the next step, which is doing your own self-assessment of where you are related to the next gen process. It will be critically important for us to develop exam questions that are aligned with the next gen blueprint. That blueprint should be coming out sometime next year, but keep your eye open on the National Board of Nursing website to ensure that you are receiving the most current information. We hope this session has been helpful and we look forward to seeing you next time.